I can give you over 40,000 reasons why I know that sun isn't real. I know it because the emitter's Rayleigh effect is disproportionate to its suggested size. I know it because its stellar cycle is more symmetrical than that of an actual star. But for all that, I'll never actually know if it looks real. If it feels real. Before this is all over, promise me you'll figure out which one of us is the machine. So what's your plan? Infinity's tracked the Didax vessel to a docking structure southeast of here. We'll jump ship as Infinity exits the roof. You know, I was sent down here with orders to prevent you from leaving. In case you'd already gone, I took the precaution of ordering a Pelican. Outfitted for full combat pursuit. I hope to God you're wrong about that Forerunner. Or whatever he is, Chief. But in the vent, you're not. And Chief, good luck. Both of you. Come on, Chief. Take a girl for a ride. Hello everybody and welcome to the 6th video on my Halo 4 Legendary Water Guide. In this video we'll be doing shutdown and we're going to get started by going over to the Pelican and exchanging a few weapons. We're going to want to pick up a DMR and a Railgun and then go over to the other side to go get some more ammo off of that as well. Um, just make sure you also have a jetpack before you go as well. And then when you're ready, feel free to get into the Pelican so we can continue on with the mission. Now while we wait, I do want to say that this is the final really short video that we have for the entire Halo 4 Legendary Walkthrough Guide. Uh, we only have two more missions after this. We have Composer and then we have Midnight, both of which are right around 30-35 minute videos. Um, but those are also the really really fun missions because there's a lot going on in them and I mean hey we would be able to accomplish um, accomplish Halo 4 without dying. This is all Legendary No Deaths if you didn't know that already. Um, another thing is I, I incorporate speedrunning techniques into my videos. The ones that I do incorporate, I believe that anybody can pull off. I mean, this one right here that we're about to do, it allows us to skip the entire, like, Pelican fight out in the, out in the open like this. And I, I believe that anybody can pull this one off. All you have to do is, uh, point the Pelican directly at this pillar where we're going right here. You're looking for this little orange, uh, like, kind of light coming through it. And that's where you want to take your pelican. That's where you want to aim it. You also want to make sure that your pelican just goes straight towards it. You don't want to get distracted by any of the other stuff going on outside. Now, once you're over here, you're going to fly on down. Go to this little platform that I'm about to land on. And then you're going to aim for one of these little openings when you get out. And you're, you're going to immediately jetpack through that little opening. And then that is basically the skip. You would have skipped the entire outside portion of this mission, and this gets you to right about the 50% mark in this mission, and it's very, very easy to pull off. Like, it, it gets you to that 50% that marker, and I, I understand, like, maybe you guys are really into the uh, the fight outside, but it is a, a way for you guys to uh, basically get through this mission without a gigantic... Uh, like a gigantic problem that may be solved by just simply doing this skip. Now once we get to this platform, we are going to take out these three grunts on the platform closest to us, as well as take out the turret gunner on the other side. As you're seeing here, I am making sure that I always keep a grunt off that turret because we we want to make sure that we use this as like a uh, like a safe little area. And I forgot about this, uh, this grunt here on the left on another turret parallel to the other side. So you always want to make sure you take out those two turret gunners and make sure that you are keeping an eye out for any other, um, 
grunts or elites that are going to hop onto those those turrets. Now we got a few jackals here taking them out as well. Got a crate of carbine. We are going to be using that later on. Or if you run out of your, or if we're efficient with our DMR, we might not have to. But if you do need, um, if you do run out of your DMR, there is that crate of carbine right here. As you see here, we got a few elites here. We got looks like an elite major and elite uh, elite ultra on the right. We're going to take out these jackals here across the chasm. And then we're trying to see if we can get these little small infantry, like the grunts, out of the way. That way it's super easy for us to take out the elites without worry of a suicide grunt coming over and, like, ruining our day. Now, right here, I was trying my best to pick up this plasma pistol. I was trying to do a little weapon juggling, but then I finally was like, you know what? Um, well, I wanted it to be, like, right next to the uh, carbine crate just in case I needed it. Um, but again, keeping an eye out for this grunt here. And then we're going to pull up. With our uh, plasma pistol, we're going to try to EMP the. Uh, we're going to try to noob combo the uh, the elites here. Unfortunately, missed my first two shots. You typically want to make sure your reticle is red, so that way it tracks efficiently, and then you can uh, pull off the noob combo. Keeping an eye out. Unfortunately, I got um, I got EMP'd by that grunt, so I, I decided to fall back, make sure that I had my shields recharged before I pushed on forward to this elite. That is a good tactic to gain into. Play safe. And then tried to get the uh, the quick EMP on him, but unfortunately couldn't. But thankfully he did decide to throw a grenade, so it really did help out in taking him out. Got really lucky on that one because he kind of just stood still and took my EMP. And that was that's pretty much all the elites that you have to deal with in this little section of uh, this basically first section of the mission. Okay, we're going to go back to go grab the railgun because we are going to be dealing with the hunters in a few moments. As you see, going to pick it up right here. Not going to take up a carbine because I have plenty of ammo for the rest of these enemies just in case there is a, a, a grunt. No need to go uh, grab a carbine. Like I have, I saw plenty of shots left. Now, right here is where it's going to get a little, uh, a little crazy. You're going to use your railgun initially, and you're going to try to target just one of them at a time with the railgun. If you miss... Don't worry about it. You have scattershot also on the right. There is that fuel rod cannon that the uh, elite mate, the elite ultra also did drop when we killed him. So we have plenty of ways to take out these uh, these hunters. As you see here, I am still focus firing on one of them, and I'm using my uh, my jetpack to help me out as well. All right, time to use some of these grenades using the pillar for cover. Tossing a few more. Unfortunately, missed really really badly. But this is a point where we can go grab our uh, our fuel rod cannon. I'm gonna try to focus fire one of them. Thankfully, we got one. Now we just go grab the scatter shot. Now this part right here, it's a little ballsy. You can choose to do this, or you can uh, just like try to be as a uh, as passive as possible. But I do use the scatter shot, and I also try to use the fuel uh, not the fuel rod, but the jetpack to kind of keep myself always moving because. If you notice, like, the one shot, he's really, really going to have an issue shooting me while in the middle of the air. Like, again, they try to track you uh, while you're, like, they try to aim where you were, not where you are going. So, use that to your advantage when, when you're fighting hunters. And, again, the scatter shot takes a little bit of time, but you will always be able to pull it off. Um, it, it's actually a fairly safe strategy. It, it, most of the time I fought them, it was super easy. Now, as you saw back there, I did pick up a fresh plasma pistol as well as a carbine. But this part right here actually might be the hardest part for many people. And it's just to get the Banshee. And then basically you want to use the, uh, the structures as cover. And then fly up once you get close enough to this door here. You're going to jump on out and immediately sprint up. And then use your jetpack to gain elevation. That way they can't shoot at you uh, since you're going to be behind cover. But once you get to this part, uh, this point in the mission, you have successfully completed shutdown on legendary difficulty without any dying. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much the mission. If you guys did find this video helpful, please leave a like down below. Um, if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, suggestions about how I do future walkthrough guides, feel free to leave those down below as well. Now, as I said, there are only two more videos in the Halo 4 Legendary Walkthrough Guide. We got Composer coming up next. And... Uh, yeah, if you guys want to keep uh, keep up with these guides and 
support the channel, feel free to also subscribe. And if you do subscribe, hit that little bell icon, and uh, that'll be that'll be extraordinarily helpful to make the channel uh, fight against the evil algorithm that the uh, that the YouTube's has. So, as I said, guys, thank you guys for watching. Um, at this point in time, when we try to board the lich, all you do is you take a uh, just basically wait for this to go down, and then you just run, and then jump off the side, and that's it. Thanks again, guys, for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Cortana. What's happening? I don't know. Hang on! Jumping into slipspace. Get below deck. No time.